Hey guys, my name is Emil Vidal Carr, and in this video, I'll be talking to you about the stages that led up to me making my first £10,000 order in the fashion industry. I'll be giving you some ideas on how to get to this stage yourself and stay with me till the end of this video because I'll be giving you three key tips on how to achieve this goal. After spending a few years of doing made to measure while I was charging, I'd say about 50, 60 pound a dress. Bear in mind this was back in the early 2000s. I, decide, I decided that the business needed to shift in the direction I was gonna take it. Without me knowing this period of my life where I was doing made to measure set me up because it allowed me to develop my technical skills, uh, improve my customer service, and also it taught me to work well under pressure. Now, before I acquired that 10K order, one day I took it upon myself to visit a range of independent boutiques that were based in London, visit them and then show them my range with the express target of gaining at least one or two stockists. Now, this was so far at my character because any of you guys that know me, you know, I'm a really quiet person. Um, I'm, I'm quietly confident, but speaking to strangers is not my area of comfort. So this was a real break from the norm for me. So over a period of four to five days, I had 10 boutiques that I wanted to target. Now, even though this was out of the blue, I, I made some sort of strategy. Now, even though this was out of the blue, I devised a strategy where I would see them in order of how close they were to my house. So from the nearest to the furthest. Now, even though I had a daily target of two stores a day, on the first day, I managed to visit four. And in those days, I wasn't driving. So everything was me walking or either getting on the bus or getting on the, on the train. So after walking around, I managed to get two stores that would agree to stock my range. One of them was in the Arndale Centre, which is, I believe, now called Southside in Wandsworth. And then the other one was an independent boutique that's in Ballum. So at this point in my career, I was the only one that was making the product. So there were a lot of logistical problems that, that I had to tackle. Now I had to fit this around my part-time job and my uni work. So this was a huge logistical problem. The first store in the Arndale Centre, they chose a few pieces that took me probably two or three weeks to make. Now the store in Ballon, they chose all of my pieces as one-offs and they were gonna do uh, made to measure orders. Things started really well, but after a few months, the quality of the workmanship started to take a dip and it all became too much for me. I was feeling very overwhelmed and I couldn't keep up with the orders. So I had to essentially cut ties, but I still wanted to figure out a way that I could expand the business, scale it and still make money. And it just so happened that I encountered this sales agent that was based in South London that we signed a membership fee with. And at that time, we didn't know what was gonna come from it. But a couple months later, they managed to get me my first contract with ASOS. And I think the value for that order was about two and a half thousand pounds. And I remember that when we got the confirmation that ASOS wanted our product, it made me quite emotional because there had been so many things that had happened in the run up to that that it was it was kind of validation that the, the the wider market wants my designs now even though we'd had this order from asos the hard part now was to get the order completed based on spec and on time we already had the factory in place we already had the materials in place now it was a case of getting the orders delivered to the asos depot on time fortunately for us ASOS were really pleased with the order and then they put in the second order a couple of weeks later and this order was valued at ten and a half thousand pounds. Now one thing to bear in mind is because we were going through an agent their commission was twelve and a half percent so any any money that we were getting we'd have to pay them that twelve and a half percent for their time. Now one thing I want to make you aware of is when you're dealing with these huge brand names like ASOS is that they fine you for every mistake made in your delivery. So even if you deliver late, if you deliver the wrong product, if there's any issues with, the, with your packaging, you get fined for that. So it's in your best interest to make sure that your delivery is 10 out of 10 because it's gonna cost you in the short and the long term. And also it's likely that customer isn't gonna put a wholesale order with your company again. Now, here are my three key tips on how you can achieve your first 10,000 pound order. Number one, now this might sound obvious, but create a collection that is suitable for your market. 
Now, as designers, we all exist to create something that doesn't exist on the market. But ask yourself, is there a reason why it doesn't exist? Is it because no one wants it? Number two, try to get a sales agent to represent you. So if they take you on, that means you're already down the right path. Also, sales agents know what buyers are looking for. They already have great relationships with them and they speak the same lingo. Third and final one, ensure you have a factory and a production chain that's tried and tested. The last thing you wanna do is take the order because it's very easy to take the money but not have the means to fulfill it because all that's gonna happen is that you're gonna to have to give that money back and you lose out big time. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video on how I made my first £10,000 order in the fashion industry. I hope you're already following the channel. And remember, if you have any tailored advice that you need about your business, please get in touch and book a private session using the link and contact details in the description below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.